Okay, here we go. Welcome to your topic A quiz. There are six questions on your first quiz of eighth grade. You have your magical piece of paper in front of you. It's folded into four. So you have four sections on the front, four on the back. You will have, obviously, if we only use one question per box, you'll have two boxes left at the end. You get to use this on your quiz tomorrow. So you want to make sure you take as good of notes as possible. You can write even more than what I have, but I'm going to go through each question with you. And I'm also going to tell you what each question is worth so that you can see where the biggest bang for the buck is. There are some questions where you cannot get partial credit. So if you miss, and the way that Eureka Math is set up, if you miss an easy question, which is at a partially proficient level, it's all or nothing. It's worth the most amount of points, but if you if you mess mess up on it, you get nothing. And then there are some that are harder that they can give you partial credit. And I will show you what each one is worth. So if you look at number one, it shows us that number one is worth three points. It also shows you, and I'm going to leave this up here so we can fill out each box accordingly. So number one is going to be worth three points. Notice the proficiency indicator. So if you can get number one, you're working at a partially proficient level. So I would put a little three in circle for number one. It also tells you that it's dichotomous. So there are two types of problems on every test. There are dichotomous, where it's all or nothing, and then there's polytomous, which you can get partial credit. Okay. Your polytomous, you see HP for number two. What do you think? If this is partially proficient, what do you think the HP stands for? Highly proficient. Highly proficient. Okay. So the end game for every every student hopefully is to be highly proficient. Okay. We're not all going to be there. Notice that highly proficient. Do you get hammered if you miss a highly proficient question? You do not. It's only worth one point, okay? And you can get partial credit. You do get hammered if you miss partially proficient questions. You've got to get the basics. Of, it's sort of like what I talked about, the exit ticket. And I say, this is the bottom basement. This is the foundational stuff that you need to know. The partially proficients are like the exit tickets, the basis, okay? Then we get harder, and then they're worth less points. So we have partially proficient, we have highly proficient, another partially proficient, a proficient, a proficient, and a highly proficient. And then you can see most of them are all or nothing. The only one that you can get partial credit on is number two. Okay? Everything else is all or nothing. So keep that in mind as we're going through. Number one, put a little three points in the top box. And since it's at a partially proficient level, we would assume that this would be a pretty easy question. So if I go to number one, it says a phone app is downloaded and then it gives us this number written in standard form. And we need to take that number that is written in standard form and you need to write the number in scientific notation. Okay, so it's a basic skill that you should have going from standard form to scientific notation. So we're gonna write, what is that number? That number is 1.9 billion or 1 billion 900 million, right? So we're gonna write 1 billion. I'm just gonna write it a little bit larger so we can clearly see. How many times I'm gonna move the decimal. So there's my original number in standard form. And then it says, put it in scientific notation. So I'm going to take my decimal, which I don't see, but my decimal is right here. And how many times do I need to move this so I can get that number to be between 1 and 10? It's clearly not between 1 and 10. Nine times, right? So let's go. I'm going to go my, my shortcut, my groups of three. So I'm going to move it three times and then I'm going to move it another three times and then I'm going to move it another three times and that puts my decimal right there where I want it to be 
And so my answer in scientific notation is 1.9 times, it's always a power of 10 times some power of 10, and I moved it nine times. So it's 1.9 times 10 to the ninth. How many points is that worth? Three. So in that box, make sure you have three circled so you know that that is three-pointer, okay? You know that if you're going to miss one or two, if you say, you know, I only want to get one of these two right, you want to get number one right because that's worth three points. Two is not worth three points, okay? Two is fairly lengthy. You're in your second box. It gives you... A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. It gives you eight different numbers. It says you need to order the numbers from least to greatest. And then once we put the numbers in order from least to greatest, we're going to put the letters, the appropriate letters, in order from least to greatest. So I have eight numbers. And so you're going to write on your paper, you're going to write A, and you're going to put 73.5, and this is in your second column. And then you're going to put B, and that's 920. And then you're going to put C, which is 9.2 times 10 to the third. And then you're going to put D. And yours is going to look cleaner than mine because you'll have more space on your paper. You're going to put 7.2. 3, 5 times 10 to the 5th. And then you're going to put E, which is 92,000. And then F, which is 7.35 times 10 to the 3rd. G, is 9.2 and our last number is h which is 7.35 times 10 squared okay so let's go back to our scoring guide this is number two there are eight numbers it's polytomous it's only worth one total point so since you can get partial credit each one in the correct location is worth one eighth of a point because eight times one eighth is one point. So this whole thing is only worth one point. So it's not that, I mean, it's considered highly proficient or highly, <coughs> excuse me, highly proficient as far as the indicator. It actually doesn't seem like it's that difficult. So as we go back to this, the easiest way to do this is either to take your scientific notation numbers and put them in standard form or you take your standard form and you put them in scientific notation okay i find it easier to put standard in a scientific notation because then i don't have to worry about all those zeros or moving stuff so if i take actually let's go a different color if i take a that is written in standard form it's 73.5. Is that between 1 and 10? No. No. So I'm going to move it how many times to get this number between 1 and 10? A lot. Man, not a lot. Actually, yeah. not very many at all. I'm just going to have to move it once, right? So this number, letter A in scientific notation, is 7.35 times 10 to the first. And then B is also written in standard form. I'm going to take 920, and I'm going to put that in scientific notation. How many times do I have to move that decimal? Twice, right? So that is 9.2 times 10 squared. C is already in scientific. D is already in scientific. E is not in scientific. E is in standard form. How many times do I have to move that decimal to get it between 1 and 10? It's four times. So this is now 9.2 times 10 to the fourth. F is in scientific notation. 
and G is not. G is 9.2. Oh, notice about 9.2. It's already between 1 and 10. So do I have to multiply it by 10? Do I have to move it anywhere? No. So maybe you've never seen this before. I don't need any 10s, so this is going to be called 10 to the 0 power. And that's how you change a number that is just in standard form, that is already between 1 and 10, and you put it in scientific notation. Because I don't need to multiply it by any 10s, so it's 10 to the 0. So we're now set up to put this in our little row from least to greatest. So now look at your exponents. That's the first thing you look at. Look at your exponents. Whichever one has the smallest exponent, that's going to be the smallest number. And then if I have two exponents that are the same, then I have to go and look at the initial number, and then that will determine which of those two or which of those three is the smallest number. So look at all your exponents. Which letter has the smallest exponent? D? G. Oh, G is in great. So G is our smallest number. Then I go to my next one, which is the next letter that has the smallest exponent? H, I see something less than H. A, a right? Because A up here is times 10 to the first, so that has to be my next smallest. And then now are we going with H? Oh, but look, I have H with 10 to the second power. I also have B. They both are 10 to the second power. So now I have to go to the initial factor. One's 7.35, one's 9.2. Which one's smaller, 7 or 9? Seven. 7. Seven's smaller, so it is H. <coughs> so then by default, we only have one other one that's 10 to the second power, so it has to be B. We've already earned four out of the eight possible eights. So I'm at four eights. I'm at half a point so far. Uh, what's next? F. I have F, which is 10 to the third. I also have C, which is 10 to the third. But F is 7.35 and C is 9.2. So F is smaller than C. And then the only other 10 to the third was C, so then I go C. And then I only, I only have two left. I've got a 10 to the fourth, and I've got a 10 to the fifth. Which one's smaller, 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth? 10 to the fourth is smaller, so E is smaller. And so my largest number, my greatest number is D. So according to them, that's the hardest problem on the test. Is that hard? No. I don't think so. So you could even give yourself, you know, hopefully one point on this. This is a highly proficient. And we are done with the first two problems. Next box, box three. Let's hide that. I actually think this one's harder. This says, and I'm going to get back to our number three shows us partially proficient. So this is a three pointer. It's all or nothing. But if I was to look at two and three, I actually think three is harder to get than two because you have to look at the way the words are written, the way the different uh, answers are written, and you have to come up with the relationship between the two. It says, which statement correctly compares the values of 7.8 times 10 to the 8th and 2.6 times 10 to the 6th? And remember how we always did times as much as, so we would put our first number here, so 7.8 times 10 to the 8th, and then it says is, now notice a couple of these start with the 2.6, but I'm going to start with this big number, and then I'm going to show you a shortcut to flip it. 
So 7.8 times 10 to the eighth is, don't forget, is is always equals. And then we have to figure out how many times is much. It gives us four different possible answers. And then the smaller number is 2.6 times 10 to the sixth. So that's our problem. And I need to solve for that missing number. And then there are four possible answers that it gives us. So I'm going to divide. Let's go a different color. I'm going to divide by 2.6 times 10 to the sixth. I'm going to divide this side by 2.6 times 10 to the sixth. So now I just have to do the math. What is 7.8 divided by 2.6? It goes in evenly. How many times does 2.6 go into 7.8? Three times exactly. That's correct. And then remember this. This is division. I've got 10 to the eighth on top. I've got 10 to the sixth on bottom. Where do I have more tens? Do I have more tens on top or on bottom? On top. How many more do I have on top? Two. So then what is three times 10 squared? It's three times 100, which is what? Okay, so I'm going to work with 300. So we know that 7.8 is 300 times 2.6 times 10 to the 6. Well, let's go to this because this is right here, C and D. Those are the ones that start with 7.8. 7.8 times 10 to the 8 is 3 times. Well, is it 3 times? Look at my circle and answer. Did we come up mathematically with three times? No. no, we came up with 300 times, right? So it cannot be C. Then we go to D. 7.8 times 10 to the eighth is 30 times. Did we come up with 30? No. no, so it can't be D. So then we have to go to the two that didn't start with 7.8. This is why I feel like it's harder than actually number two, even though it's a partially proficient. So if they started with the 2.6 instead of the 7.8, then the 2.6 would go on top and the 7.8 would go on bottom. So we'd have to flip this. So this is a nice little shortcut. So if the 7.8 on top and the 2.6 on bottom was 300 over what number could I put on the bottom? One. One. Then if I want to start with the 2.6, I have to flip this. So if I flip 300 over 1, what's 300 over 1 flipped? 1 over 300. So by me putting the small number on top, all I'm going to do is flip my answer. So it says 2.6 times 10 to the 6th is 1 over 300 times as much as 7.8 times 10 to the 8th. Do we like that answer? Yes. Yes. Yeah, because we just proved it, right? If big over small was 300, then small number over big was one over 300. So it has to be A. And then I look at my, then I look at letter B just to verify. And then it says one third. One third is clearly not the fraction that I want. I want one 300th. So my answer is A. This is an all or nothing. Set up your division problem. It's probably easier to go big number over the small number to start and then just flip it once you get your answer and then you can work with the two that are gonna be small number over the big number, okay? That is your number three. Number four, last box of the front page. It's a little word problem. Let's see what we have for our worth. Number four is on the proficient level. It's a two pointer. So your proficients are twos, your highly proficients are one, your partially proficients are three. So the easiest ones are meant to be the most amount of points. Once again, I don't know if three is the easiest one, but they have it labeled as partially proficient. 
So let me go back at the three real quick. Oh, I already had the three right there. Okay, number four, a two-pointer. It says approximately 1.3 times 10 to the fifth people ride the subway every day, every weekday in City A. That's in scientific notation. Then approximately 5.2 times 10 to the sixth people ride the subway every day or every weekday in City B. Also in scientific notation. Then it sets up the problem like this. The number of people who ride the subway every weekday in City B. And then it says is. So City B is how many times the number of the people that ride the subway in City A. So what's the number for City B? 5.2 times 10 to the 6th. So 5.2 times 10 to the 6th equals how many times the number of people that ride the subway in City A? What's the City A? What's that number in scientific notation? 1.3 times 10 to the 5th. So if I want to solve for my unknown factor, what do I do with these two numbers? I divide, right? So I take the big number and I divide by the small number. So I'm going to get this little box by itself. So I'm going to get rid of So these cancel out, so I'm left with my unknown factor. It works out perfect. So e even though they're ugly decimals to start, 5.2 divided by 1.3. So how many times does 1.3 go into 5.2? It is an even number. Four. Maybe, I don't know if you guys still play. Do people play playing cards anymore? You play cards, deck of cards? 52 cards in a deck, right? So if I ignored the decimals, 52 cards in a deck. Each suit has 13 cards, right? 13 times 4 is 52. So that's how it's an easy way to figure that out. So it's equals, I know that 5.2 divided by 1.3 is 4. 10 to the 6th on top. 10 to the 5th on bottom. More 10s on top, more 10s on bottom. On top. How many more 10s on top? 1. So what is... 4 times 10 to the first in standard form? 40. So your answer is 40. Two-pointer, proficient. All or nothing. That's not too bad, right? And then we're down to our last two. So you should be on the back. You should be on the back. It says, write in scientific notation my answer. And it says, what is the sum of, I'm going to rewrite this, 5.3 times 10 to the ninth plus 6.8 times 10 to the ninth. Hopefully you've trained your eye to look at what first Ooh, our eyes have not been trained. What do we train our eye to look at first if I'm trying to add two of these together? What do I look at first? Nope, nope, nope. Legend, what do I look at? I look at the exponent, right? Because I can't add or subtract unless the exponents are already the same. So as I look at those two exponents, are they the same? Yeah, they're both 10 to the ninth power. So it allows me to add... Since it's 5.3 times 10 to the ninth, and it's also 6.8 times 10 to the ninth, that allows me to add these two numbers together. So I go 6.8 plus 5.3. So what is 6.8 plus 5.3? 12.1? I like it, but I don't like it. It's not between 1 and 10, right? So it's 12.1 times 10 to the ninth. Do you notice 
Is that one of your answers? Look at your A, B, C, D. Is that one of your answers? Yeah. So they want to catch the people that say, oh, I think this is in scientific notation. And so some of you guys are going to say, oh, it's B, because there's my answer right there. But it can't be B, because this is not between 1 and 10. That's not in scientific notation. So don't get fooled by that. It's not B. I've got to put it between 1 and 10. So how many times do I have to move this decimal right there? Once. So it becomes 1.21 times 10 to the first, but you already had 10 to the ninth. So now you have more than nine tens. How many tens do you have? 10, right? So your answer is 1.21 times 10 to the 10th, which is A. How would they come up with... Uh, 3.604, what would they have done? Oh, I know what they would have done. How would they come up with 36.04? They multiplied, yeah. They multiplied 5.3 times 6.8, okay? But we're adding those two because they're both times 10 to the ninth, so they're... And what was number five? Do we know? Number five was... Number five was also on the proficient see level so just a middle of the road problem and then our last problem says find the difference of and i will rewrite this so you can see it nice and large 9.56 times 10 to the seventh minus 4.31 times 10 to the sixth. So we just talked about, we trained our eye to look at the what? The exponents, are they the same? They're not the same. So you can either take the one that's 10 to the seventh and make that 10 to the sixth by moving the decimal to the right one, or you can, I always like to go up. So whichever one's the lower exponent, I like to go up with that one. So this one's my lower exponent. So I'm going to take this decimal and I'm not going to go to the right because to the right would take one away. So I'm going to go to the left, right? So let's go a different color. So I'm going to change this to green. And I changed 4.31 to 0 0.431, so this 10 to the 6th becomes 10 to the 7th. So I'm going to go 9.56 times 10 to the 7th minus 0 0.431, now times 10 to the 7th. Now they are the same exponent. Now we're allowed to subtract. Now I was watching yesterday, some people forgot, if you are subtracting decimals, what's step one? Make sure what's lined up. The decimal, right? So someone just had 956 per se, and then they had 431 right underneath that. That doesn't work because the decimal is right here. You have to line up the decimal. And then do your subtraction. If your decimals are lot, lot, not lined up, you are not ready to go. Uh, zero minus one, I cannot do. Borrow from the six, it becomes a 10. 10 minus 1 is 9, 5 minus 3 is 2, 5 minus 4 is 1, decimal straight down. Do I like that number? Yeah, yeah I love that number because why? <laughs> it's already between 1 and 10, so I don't have to move it anymore. It's already there. 9.129 times 10 to the what power? Seventh. That is your test. Was that a highly proficient? Is that our last problem? Highly proficient one pointer. So we have one point. We have one point plus two. We got three plus another two. We got five. We've got plus three. We got eight. We've got nine. We've got 12. You got a 12 point test. 
that is fair game as of tomorrow. So what you get to do is say that again. I can, yes. <coughs> what you get to do is use this tomorrow. If I went too fast for you on this video, this is recorded. So you can go back and you can watch this tonight. You can watch this as you fall asleep. So maybe you dream about this. And then when you walk in tomorrow, you are ready to go. It's always great strategy. Uh, other than that, we are done for the day. I will see you tomorrow. Not you, not you guys. Not you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Good luck on your test.